What's it all about? Why do we exist? What is our purpose in life? Great minds have pondered these questions for thousands of years, without a conclusion. However, there have been some insightful observations. Douglas Adams' Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy gave us the answer to life, the universe, and everything as 42. Well, at least that's clear. Plato suggested, be kind, for everyone you meet is fighting a harder battle. Groucho Marx said, I wouldn't want to belong to a club that would have someone like me as a member. Confucius said, choose a job you love and you will never have to work a day in your life. Jerry Seinfeld concluded, there is no such thing as fun for the whole family. Gautama Buddha believed, your purpose in life is to find your purpose and give your whole heart and soul to it. Albert Einstein observed, no problem can be solved by the same level of consciousness that created it. And profoundly, Woody Allen is quoted as saying, I think universal harmony is a pipe dream and it may be more productive to focus on more modest goals, like a ban on yodeling. Perhaps the last words should come from the world's foremost authority on all things cosmological. In the world of theoretical physics, I've come to understand many things. Every day I live my life with the assistance of a computer. It allows me to have interaction with fellow man. Humans and machines need to be in closer harmony. I understand quantum mechanics and the theory of relativity. But, there is one frontier of knowledge that still escapes my understanding. How do I get, served, face, to face? This is one of the truly big questions. And greater minds than mine, have pondered this. So what is our daily life all about? If you believed all the messages we're hit with every day, you might think that we live in some kind of virtual reality world. A faceless Facebook world surrounded by hundreds of our virtual friends that we share every moment of our lives with. A world where we can get anything we desire at the click of a mouse or the touch of a screen from anywhere we happen to be. Oh, and all the applications are easy and make our life faster and easier. Some of that does happen, but in truth, technology is not always the answer or our friend. Not universally good or universally bad. Search engines, find engines, online dating, Yahoo, trip advising, linking in, checking out things, online banking, music up and download, Spotify, Spotty Faces, PayPal's, Gay Pals, clicking to chat, avatars, social sites, anti-social sites, Skyping, hyping, sites for comparing, sites for declaring, emojis, images, lots of apps and a mix of issues. Privacy, selling data, scamming, spamming, Viruses, Trojans, hacking, ID theft, passwords, bullying, profiling, stalking. Technology has many faces, not all of them attractive. But most of all, the experience online is not always compatible with the experience in the real world. However sophisticated the technology may be, most of our everyday wants and needs ultimately revolve around other people. If technology precludes all human interaction, then it would be a sad world indeed. We are by nature social animals. We seek human interaction. You can choose a car online, but you still need to drive it. People love to click to order, but now want to collect it themselves. And what would a dating site be without the date? Not quite the fun you imagined. And the great news is that our clients and potential clients know this and want to make it better. There's a drive amongst service providers to make the experience and connection between the digital and face-to-face -face world seamless. Here's an example of what I mean. If I was talking to you face-to-face, -face, I'd feel a much better sense of connection, and I hope you would too. The problem is, there's a boundary, 
this screen, this surface imprisons me in the virtual world. And it shouldn't be like that.